We are today at Paradise Now Church, 17th of the 11th, 2024. We have Brother Nathan with us today. Let us give Brother Nathan a welcome. <laughs> welcome him today. We all know what it's like to be amongst people we're not familiar with. Can be a little bit awkward, you know, at times. It is for me, I'm like that, you know. But uh, I believe the anointing in the Holy Spirit will fix all that, you know. When uh, Psalm 133 says that, doesn't it? It says where brethren dwell together in unity, when they're in one accord, uh, the Lord blesses it with a, a wonderful anointing like the oil running down the beard of Aaron, you know. And there's great blessing where people come together in agreement. Right? That's hard to find today. A lot of churches with a lot of people, I mean a lot of people, thousands and tens of thousands, but I can guarantee you now they're not in agreement. They've all got their hum ha, you know. I don't really believe this, and I don't really believe that. You know, it would be as if, as if, um, you know, the doctrine of Christ, you know, uh, has options, or uh, there are many doctrines. No, there's only one. There's only one doctrine. And it's not Paul Sheehan's, and it's not Bill Brown's. Or Joyce Meyer or Benny Hinn or Clef Lip Dollar or Cref Row Dollar, isn't it? Yeah. It's Jesus. That's where, you know, that's where the uh, a fraction too much friction comes in. Right? When uh, you bring out what Jesus said, and people don't want to know about it, they want to look alike. They want their version of Jesus, you know, and that's hard. That's hard to swallow. You know? As we grow in the Lord, I'm only young in the Lord, you know. I'm only 37 half years, but that's quite young. But I find it, I find it difficult, you know, uh, when people come with other doctrines because I've become jealous for Jesus. I've become jealous for uh, my neighbour and jealous for myself. Therefore, I have to, you know, guard my heart with all diligence, you know, at least anything foreign come in, you know, and poison the, poison the brew that I'm, I've been drinking for 37 and a half years, the true wine from the true vine. You know, and I'm happy with that as a, as a uh, ex-alcoholic junkie, you know, chain smoker. I, I needed something stronger than the LSD, the, the, you know, the marijuana and the hash. I needed something stronger than Jack Daniels and uh, the Lord showed me his wine, John 15, 1 to 6, you know. He's the vine and we are the branches and we partake of him. And uh, as long as we do, everything will be sweet. If we cease partaking of the true wine and abiding in, in, in the vine, what happens then is we dry out, you know, and uh, the branch gets crispy and the Lord cuts it off, throws it in the fire. I know a lot of churches don't want to talk about that. There's no money in that sort of talk. <laughs> There's no money in it. And that's why we're sitting right here today. I'm not, I'm not here for the money. 
and uh, I'm here uh, because the Lord put me here and that's the bottom line mm -hmm. you know uh, Jesus said, not my will, but yours. If I had my will going today, I'd probably be around the tweed somewhere, you know, in a beer garden, hooking into, you know, to some Mullumbimby head, washing it down with green label bourbon, you know, and I'd be with a bike club, definitely MC, outlaw, but uh, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> I'm here because I'm here because the Lord brought me here. I let the Lord have his way in my life every day. Without it, there's no peace or rest till the Lord has his way. Amen. I put it, my life in his hands and I rest secure in, in his plan. And we see the world, they don't know what they're doing. Doesn't matter where you go or what you're buying, whether you're buying a cupcake <laughs> Or whether you're buying a brand new car or filling out an insurance policy, they don't know what they're doing. And the fine print's so fine, Superman can't read it. And then when it comes, when it comes to the crunch, you know, you really weren't insured. <laughs> you just thought you were insured. Yeah. And I won't go into the building sector, building homes and buying land and property because that's just beyond 2000 you know, that... That's out of the question. I mean, that's just ridiculously flawed. Um, yeah, what's going on around us, eh? Hey? 70 people every day uh, have a, a sudden cardiac arrest. 70 people in Australia every day. Um, I praise the Lord, you know, that uh, I, when I had a heart attack, uh, I was food poisoned, eating a kebab. And uh, I praise the Lord that I trusted him. And the surgeons at the hospital said, you can take a tube in your heart and uh, five pills for the rest of your life and get the, the tube the stent change once a year. No. I take one pill, the gosh pill, and that was nearly 17 years ago, yeah? That was 2028, eight, yeah. Nearly 17 years ago. And I'm feeling uh, all right, and I'm feeling too good myself. No, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling around about 40. I know I look 30, but. I'm feeling around about 40 and I'm going on 68, hey? And uh, so my heart goes out to these people, you know, because they don't know. They don't know there's another way. And Jesus is the way, you know? With so many issues and problems in life, um, people think, there's, oh, there's only, that's the only way. And they're stuck on this wide road, uh, what, we know as the highway to hell, <laughs> which I was on. Uh, and everything is, uh, they're dictated to by whatever's on the wide road. And they suck it up and they think it's, that's the truth. But the reality is we don't trust in what we see. According to script, we trust in what we don't see. We live by faith in the Son of God, not by feelings. We don't live by feelings and we don't live by what we see with our naked eye because it can lie to you, you know. And so um, how blessed are we as the people of God? How blessed are we, you know, that we're not here because we have some great financial promise that we're going to become millionaires, you know, like the man in the pulpit. We're going to become like him. We're going to become a millionaire. No, Jesus, he never cloned anyone. Jesus has unique individuals who made a willing, heartfelt, loving decision to follow him. And if it's not that, it's just religion, isn't it? 
stinking religion again. You know, raised up in this garbage religion. My son who sits down the back there, Brother Shadrach, and Sister Hannah, my daughter, I've always given them the choice. And they're here today by choice. They're not here because I threatened them. You know, you're not going to make me look good if you don't rock up. <laughs> That's religious garbage. That's just, I hate that stuff, you know. Jesus come to set the cabinet free. You know what I mean? And who am I to hold anyone against their will? I'm nobody. <laughs> you know? Outside of Christ, I'm, I'm just dust, you know? And so, um, yeah, the people of the world don't know that there's this way, it's narrow, it is difficult, but it's worth it. Pays big dividends, uh, you know, eternal life, and we all have eternal life. The man in the pub or the murderer, the rapist, have, they all have eternal life, but it'll be in hell if they don't repent. But we want eternal life with Jesus, you know. We, we don't want to be um, uh, called to wrath, uh, but called and um, saved, called to salvation, the saving of our, of our soul. So we've got to get out there, and times are getting rough. 2025 will be rough. Be really heavy on the minds of the people, you know. There's a lot going on in the minds of people. I only consider, because I'm no different to anyone else, flesh, flesh and uh, bone and uh, body and mind, will, emotions, you know. And I know it goes on in my life. And I'm aware that... Uh, so much can be going on in the mind of individuals. We, we just don't know. I believe that's why James said to tread lightly, you know, uh, Peter Troy. Tread lightly, you know, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow. The old quick, slow, slow, Holy Ghost Walt. Da, 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 da. Quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to get angry. And we then we should do all right. We won't regret uh, our conversations with whether they're strangers, so to speak, or, or people, because we're quick to listen. It's a powerful key, isn't it? Quick to listen, slow to speak. Think it through. Put on the think tank, you know, and just rattle off your mouth, you know, and then slow to get angry. But you can get angry. But make sure it, it, it takes you a long time, you know. A person who's quick to anger is not to be bothered about. No need to fear a person who is uh, quick to anger. But you should fear a person who's slow to anger too. Because if you press the wrong button then, it could be trouble. 16-year-old... I'll just get through this, then we're going to the message, eh? 16 year old fellow, uh, stolen out. He crashed into a car, killed a person. He had 16 bail breaches. 16 bail breaches. And, and he's still driving, stealing, and killed a, a person. I mean, this is the situation in this country, and most probably in America too, and everywhere else. Last days, perilous times, trouble. Very troubled times we live in. People have so many troubles and problems and issues. And, and, and a lot of them uh, are zeroed in on self, you know. Whether it's appearance or status or uh, colour, race, you know. Culture, traditions. The way they were raised or treated and all these issues, you know, that can be annulled immediately. All that can be sorted easily 
uh, with Jesus. John 1 13 you know born of God there's your key there that's the key born of God right that sort that culls the confusion that deletes it actually you know not born of mum and dad you know mum thinks this and dad thinks this you know I'm married there's my wife there put your hand up sister and say that's me you know Poor thing, and uh, she thinks this, and I think that. Yeah, and my children know that very clearly. Yeah. Oh well, Dad, you know what Mum's like. Yeah. Oh well, Mum, you know what Dad's like. Yeah. But we don't have that anymore. See, we we get rid of all that when we're just born of God. Right? Those who received him, those who received what he said, received it. Judgment, righteousness and loving kindness. Those who received Jesus, he gave them the opportunity and the right to, to become the children of God. Not the children of, you know, mum and dad anymore, but of God. One. See, then we can be of one mind. No confusion. That's what I really love about Jesus. You know, I really love that. I don't like complexities. I like simplicity. You know, I love simplicity. There's a lot of beauty and power in simplicity. You know? um, Jesus said, I, I am the way. See? So I, I've got to dig around. I've got to find out this way. You know? I've got to see what's in this. So for 37 and a half years, uh, I haven't been like... I've read 30 chapters today. <laughs> ah, no, that's religion. I'm not into religion. I'm into righteousness. And he give me that. I don't have to. I don't have to perform. I have the righteousness. You have the righteousness. If you're born again, you have the righteousness of Father through Jesus, through what Jesus done, through the blood of the Lamb. Okay. So we're not trying to perform, are we? We're not trying to perform in front of Jesus. He's the one that gave you your righteousness. No, he just said, follow me. You know, some of three or four of us on bikes and then we, we've had a feed, you know, a couple of pies and a can. And, ah, a bit of a stretch. And then someone says, come on, let's go. Well, you follow, don't you? Or you just get left behind, one or the other. And that's all Jesus said. He said, follow me, let's go. And that's a daily thing, you know. Do I read the Bible every day? No. Have I read the Bible at all fully? No. <laughs> he said I had to do that. Religion, you know. You might go to a church where they say, oh, we're going to, um, you know, read the Bible in 12 months. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing is reading it. Why don't you just fall in love with Jesus and everything will change? Everything will change. It'll be no longer, ugh, what have I got to go to church again today? You know? <laughs> Boy, do I have to keep doing this? You know? Won't be like that, will it? You don't want to be with your brothers and sisters. Who are your real brothers and sisters? And that's a hard one. Oh. Yeah. Tradition, culture, brothers, sisters, siblings. No, Jesus said, they're my brother, my sister and mother who hear the word of God and do it. I want to be with that mob. You know, I can't help being with that mob because I'm born of him. I'm born of the head of that mob. Hey, his name is Jesus. 
Oh, you just haven't had a big family. Yes, I grew up in a family of seven. There was five girls and two boys. My brother's gone. He, he, he went home. And uh, one or two of my sisters have gone. Two, maybe three. I don't know. I don't keep in touch with the others because they don't want to follow Jesus. So I just don't see them. I don't even know what they're, they're alive or not. You know, that's hard on the flesh, but I'm not in the flesh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Only one of my sisters received the Lord, really received the Lord willingly and lovingly and supported this ministry for 37 years. And she really did support. Biggest giver to the ministry ever, ever. And uh, I don't know how many cars, but uh, the thing is, you know, it's got to be love. It has to be love, you know. Easy for me to love Jesus because he first loved me, you know. People want to know what love is? Turn to Jesus and you'll know what love is. And his love has nothing to do with sex. You know, that's good, isn't it? There are no complaints then. But, yeah, agape love. Jesus never went around hugging everyone and mauling. And... I don't do that either. Single women deserve the respect of a handshake. Married women deserve the respect of a handshake. That's a bit different in, in so many churches. They're all hugging, groping and hugging and ugh, the ugly thing. You know? I don't like blokes hugging my wife. What are you doing? Take your grubby hands off her. You know? I don't like that. You know? Oh, hey, young. <laughs> Ooh. You can let go now. <laughs> no, the Lord, the Lord has his way of doing things and it's not the way of men and women. He is above and we are below. It's a, it's a, a refined... Uh, it's a refined life with Jesus. It's not shabby or grubby. It's slap up. It's not deceitful, double-minded or conniving. That's not Jesus' way. That's why it's so beautiful when we lock in and we live up to the Word of God. We live up to the light we have. Light is knowledge. You got that much knowledge? Just live up to that and you'll be mounting up with wings like eagle. You'll be running and not getting weary and walking and not fainting. If you got that much knowledge, live up to it. And you also soar like the eagles. Amen. We know we're in the end times. You know, the things that Jesus said are right before our very eyes. Only out west in Winton, 110k winds came out of absolutely nowhere and just ripped the place up. 110k. I've never seen that before. Just came out of nowhere. What's that remind you of? Just came out of nowhere. Like a thief in the night, he will come. Like a thief in the night. You're not going to be broadcasting it on TV. Oh, we're just letting those Christian people know. Not that we're Christian. We're not Christian. I would not, I would not uh, have that name associated with me. Or any disciples I have. But uh, 
So many people call themselves Christian. I don't know why, because it's, it's not even biblical. Show me how many times it's mentioned. And it's usually just because of a translation thing. Paul never spoke to Christians, nor to Peter or Jesus. He spoke and they spoke to brethren, holy brethren. They, they spoke to um, like those who had like precious faith. You go to all the letters of Peter and Paul, see how they start. To the, to the saints, to the brethren, to the, you know, it doesn't say to the Christians. Why doesn't it say that? And Christianity, where's that? Where's that in the Bible? Christianity, no, that's just a mock copy of Jesus' teaching. The Bible talks about the way, the way. And those who were of the way were treated very badly. I know about that. I've been set on fire because of the way. I wasn't in the pub brawling and someone set me on fire. I was preaching and then I was attacked by an ISIS Muslim. It didn't faze me. I still got on the street the next day in the same place. But, you know, coward punched from behind by another Muslim. Face, face planting into the tiles. Ended up with curvature of the spine. And everyone just passed it off. You know, and the cops didn't want to know about it. The doctors didn't want to know about it. Hey? And it goes on and on. Stoned. Stoned. In a most inconspicuous place. Police headquarters. Outside police headquarters. Where there's no trees, no plants. Just stones in the garden bed. <laughs> and... Uh, Heckled and mocked for 37 years, 37.5 years. Thrown out of churches, head first, smashed into cars. And my Bible thrown at me. You want to know about Jesus? You want to know about the real Jesus? And the, how the disciples read. Look, what happened to the disciples in here? It, it's not just reading for me, it's confirmation of my treatment. It confirms. My treatment confirms. This is real. It is real. That's what they'll do to you. You step over the line, they're going to smash you. <laughs> I say, bring it. I'm good to go. You know? You go in and get around these churches, see these paperback pastors. Yep. Paperback pastor, paperback pastor. Pastor, with a little piece of paper saying Pastor or Fettuccini or Reverend Dr. Father, Mother. Throw it in the bin. It's useless. That's no good for nothing. Let me hear you preach. Let me hear what you have to say. See if it touches the heart or just goes straight over my head. Come on now. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Proof's in the pud, isn't it? <laughs> They go, oh yeah, you know, I, I can play clarinet, you know. I'm a clarinet player. Hey, listen, I don't, bring the thing out, hit me with it, you know. Give me a few tunes, my dear. Huh? You either got the goods or you haven't. Ephesians 4.11. He who ascended and descended gave, gave some, gave. It's a gift. To be apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, event. It's a gift. If you don't have the gift, go back to the cannery. Go, go back and, and stay in Woolies. Stack the shelves. If you don't have the gift, if you have to go to Bible college, you don't have it. You don't have the gift. Amen? 
and all the follow up and I were chasing them down you know hee haw you know hog tie you you know you go to a church once and they, they hound you they're on the phone they hee haw I got a big John Jesus never done that Jesus was very natural in the spirit as he was in the natural. He let things take their course. Once you've given the truth to someone, it's on their head. My hands are clean. My lips are sealed. My hands are clean. Acts 20, 26. I have the blood of no man or woman on my hands. And when the Lord calls me to the judgment, just look at your hands. Clean. I told them, I have not shone to proclaim the full counsel of Christ. The judgment, the righteousness and the loving kindness. I didn't pull punches so I could get a few more heads in and a few more wallets. Hello. That's what it's about, isn't it? Filling seats. No, we're not here to fill seats. We're not here to fill seats. We're here to fill people with the truth so that they can go away and say, yeah, I finally heard the true gospel. I finally heard the truth. Something touched me. You know? And now I know he touched me and he made, made me whole. You know? Glory to the Lamb. It was an Ethiopian, wasn't it? it? Took Jeremiah out of the dungeon. An Ethiopian, yeah. Black fellow. That's who took me out of the dungeon. Aboriginal. A black fellow led me to the Lord. Hey? I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. Never forget that. And my name in the pubs was Jerry. They all knew me. Hey? Jerry. My favourite book is Jeremiah. He was a man that preached and no one listened to him. Oh, where's all your where's all your congregation, Paul? You've been preaching for thirty seven years. Where's all your congregation? I said, Well, I mean I am I am a Jeremiah. As one old drunk said at the Stones Corner pub when I was preaching, he came out. You know what you are? You, you're a Jeremiah. And I thought, well, there you go again. You know? And what about the Muslim who set me on fire? What was his words? What did the preacher do to you? And the, the Muslim said, he burned my heart. He burned my heart with his word. And what does the word say? Jesus' word is a fire and a hammer. And what did the disciples say as they walked along the road to Emmaus? That Jesus opened his mouth and their hearts burnt within them as he expounded upon the scriptures. And everyone said, Amen. Only two places mentioned in the Bible. Okay. And, the, and the word burns in my heart daily. And I'm not even reading it. Can someone say amen? <laughs> I, I'm not even reading it. still burning. It's in there. You can hear it crackling away there. Glory to the Lamb. I, definitely the last days, perilous times will come. Wars, rumours of wars. Brother rising up against brother. Children. Disobedient to parents. Running the house. Hey, women with women, lesbians, men with men, homos. Hey, all acceptable. Hey, last days, time's running out like never before. People think they're going to just crank up a relationship with Jesus and everything will be sweet. It doesn't work like that. Unless Father calls, we cannot come. Unless Jesus 
saves, we cannot be saved. Right? Recently I mentioned about going to Bali. I said I'd never go there for a million dollars. Because it's a shabby show. And too many tricksters there. Uh, it, it, the whole idea of going to, to an island is for relaxation, isn't it? Uh, and recently they had this big volcanic ash show, you know. Oh, let's go to Bali and eat the volcanic ash. And you know what? We can also have our, our flights cancelled and we can sleep on the benches at the airport. How awesome is that? Huh? That's the world. That's what we're living in. It's a shabby show. Huh? It's a shabby show. I don't care what anyone says. Right? And the TV's banging on all the time about barley. Barley this and barley that. I've been to Bali too when I set on fire. They blew Bali up, didn't they? They had a big bomb show. I know all about that. I had my Bali. I was set on fire down there in West End by that Muslim. That's my own personal Bali. And so um, all that was said this morning was to uh, poison your taste for the world. Hey, that's what it's all about. Hopefully poisoning people's taste for the world so they'll run to Jesus. They'll see the futility of the world. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What does man get for all he does? Hey? Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Read that one. Read, read that chapter and you'll see the world. I know many Pentecostal people, ministers, the likes of Hillsong, I mean Hillsong, they, they, Brian Houston tried to turn that round and say, oh, well, you know, Solomon wasn't in a good place when he wrote that, you know. Because yeah, Brian Houston loves the world. So does his wife. They love luxury living. They love the world. You know, Elon Musk has got... Has got uh, more on uh, on life than the Houston's because they love this luxury living. You know, Elon Musk. He might own a jet, but he doesn't own a house. He's smart enough not to. <laughs> I was only reading about him the other day, and his wife that he broke up with got sick of eating peanut butter. Right? And Elon Musk apparently said, oh, I can be so happy just in a unit with my computer. Right? Think about it. I mean, this guy's worth what? 300 billion? Hello? He, does he have a fleet of Maseratis or Ferraris? No. He doesn't have anything like that. You do a research on what, um, where he lives and blah, blah, blah. He really thinks he's, he, he's, a, he's like a saviour of the world. You know? You're going to help all the people. I mean, that, that's all nice, isn't it? To help, you know, to help people and, and to do good things. That's all nice. To help people out and all that. But it won't save their hide from hell. You know, you can buy a house for everyone that's on the street. Set them up and let them go their way. You know, and they'll still get back on the drugs and they'll do it, but only in their house that you bought them. And they'll self-destruct like anyone else. I was a, I was a self-harmer and on the road of self-destruction, I was self-harming, slog and grog, 25 hours a day, chain-smoking, my lungs were like prunes, you know. It's like I've never smoked. Come on. Hallelujah. But that's the world. The world is hell-bent on self-destruction or demor- self-demoralisation. That's the world. 
Now, if people want to stay there, I say, look, it's a, you know, if you want to go to hell, go to hell. If, if you want to do your own thing, find out. You have a look where it's going to end up. And at the same time, ask yourself, we'll use that word that I hate, are you happy? I'm not really... I don't know, just my thing, I suppose. I, I'd rather use the word joy or joy unspeakable. <laughs> <laughs> Joy unspeakable and full of glory, you know. Happy seems too temporary to me, you know. It's sort of like, you know, it's going to run out. I don't like run outs. I don't like things that run out. I like eternal things. Like this. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God remains forever. Okay? Man is like the grass of the field. And his glory and greatness like the flower of the grass. And it fades away in the noonday sun. Okay? That's just man. Now we're not just man, we're born again. We're saints. Saints. It's a high call for people who have no understanding what a saint is. It's untouchable for someone who doesn't know what a saint is. According to scripture, a saint is someone who follows Jesus. Nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church or Mother Teresa who died a millionaire. (laughs) <laughs> I found, found a million bucks in a bank account. No, 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 no. The Lord, the Lord made me. The Lord made you. Not mum and dad. You know. Mum and dad didn't make you. Mum and dad had sex. And then... The sperm and the egg which God created joined and there you are. But God formed you in the womb, as his word says. Made you unique. Made you you. But the powers of the air are very good at deceiving people into uh, convincing them to want to be and look like someone else. Might be Beyonce or you know, trying to look like uh, Mel B or, or, you know, I don't even know their names, but they're out there. You know, there's more silicon than flesh left, you know. They're just pumped full of silicon. And the powers of the air, principalities and powers of the air, Scripture calls them the God of this world, Satan. He's convinced them. He's convinced young men and young women to want to be like someone else or covet what someone else has. But it's a lie. You're never going to be happy, ever. <laughs> Until you return to your maker. Jesus. And God made me, gave me ability. He, he gave me stability. God gave me longevity. God never made people to die. Did you know that? Oh, he died before his time. No, he never. He died. No one dies before their time. No one. You die when God's ready. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. He gave me ability, stability, longevity. You know, he gave that to everyone that come from the womb. He gave everyone ability and he gave everyone stability and he gave everyone uh, longevity. It's just what we're going to do with it. 
if we want to uh, utilise the greatest and best stability, stability and longevity, we walk with Jesus. And it'll come out. But anything outside Jesus will only ever be stunted. Stunted ability, stunted stability and stunted longevity or eternally living in hell. Or stunted stability is uh, temporary stability. When we're not walking with the Lord and we're on the wide road. It's up and down like a roller coaster. We're stable today, unstable tomorrow. Someone comes along, touches the wrong button, we lose it. Amen. Ability. That's another one for the Bible college people. 1 Peter 4, 11. If a man is to minister, let him minister with the ability God has given him. They're not a Bible college. Let him minister with the ability God has given him. And let him speak. Not from his own heart. Speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4, 11. So. Yeah, stability. Matthew 7, 24. Right? That day will come when he'll say, go away from me, I don't know you. Oh, but I hey, hey. cast out devils and prophesied. Don't you remember me, Lord? He said, go away from me. You're working lawlessness. You're, you're practising sin. Practising it. Longevity, eh? I mean, we can look at Romans 6, 20 to 23 there. Longevity. He's given us everything, you know. He's such a great saviour. Which brings us, I'm going to move on into the message in a minute, which brings us to the Santee season, what they call Christmas, which is not in the Bible. 37 and a half years I've offered pastors Fettuccines, Reverend Doctor Father Mothers, I've offered them a hundred dollars cash. I said you can have it in two fifties or you can have it in the green back. Which one do you want? If you can show me Christmas in the Bible. And they, I don't see them ever again. And when I do come across them, I might see them in the street, they cross the road if they're heading my way. Because they just don't want to talk to me. Because they believe Santa Claus, oh yes, he's coming to your town. Whether you've been naughty or not. It's a tradition of men. Tradition of the world. How do I know that? Because the world promotes it. Do you ever hear the world promoting give up your life and follow Jesus? Do you ever hear that? Do you ever hear the world say, repent, turn from your sin now, lest you burn in hell? Do you ever hear that? No. But I do hear, Santa Claus, oh yes, he's coming to your town. Uh, tradition of the world, tradition of man, one world church. That's a, that means all these churches in agreement. But every single one of them has a different belief. How hypocritical is that? I mean, that's just hypocrisy at its best. It's a bit like King Charles who said, you know, when he becomes king, he's going to be the protector of all faiths. You know what a faith is? Of all faiths. Yes, you do. It's a doctrine. A faith is a teaching. Of all faith, no matter whether you're a Buddhist uh, or you're a Bhagwan Rajni Shrine, uh, Roman Catholic, Seven Day Adventist, Eight Day Adventist, Mormon, Christadelphian, J Dub, V Dub, 
doesn't matter. It's any of them. And he's going to defend them all. I mean, that is not a double-minded man. That is a multi-minded man. <laughs> double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and need not think he receive anything, anything, anything. Let me say again, anything from God. And that means no salvation. So Christmas, we're nearly there. Sandy's on his way. Hey? Tradition of men, the world, one world churches, uh, religious people. It's not of Jesus or for Jesus. Recently, we all know about the Myers store in Melbourne, the big one in Melbourne, where they... One time they had the seven dwarfs, you know what I mean? And then they have the, used to have baby Jesus that never grew, you know? And then now, you see the, the decline? Now they've got the Irwins. <laughs> they've got the Irwins in there, in the window. And uh, Bilbies and blah, blah, blah. But... Something's gone wrong. And uh, there's no more... uh, They won't even allow they... I'll get to who they are. They will not allow the Irwins in the window and they will not allow uh, baby Jesus in the window and they will not allow Santa. And who are they? The Palestinians. They have already rallied. The Arabs. Well, they did say the the Muslims believe that Australia is their country. Initially. What do you think of that? Oh. Things are getting nasty, aren't they? They're getting very confusing and very nasty and like sort of... You know, like... Where else can I go? I was listening to a couple of old ears on Facebook. Oh, they're probably 70, 80. And one was on the piano. And the other one was backup singer. And they, they're singing, Where else can I go but to the Lord? Ding, 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 ding. And they were right in there. I mean, they had it. I, I, had to, I gave them thumbs up. I said, go, sister. Well, apparently, you know what they did on Facebook? They um, attacked their site and hacked it. Well, there you go. Two old ears singing about Jesus. Full on, you know. I go to the rock of my salvation. They're all the good ones, you know, all the good ones from the old era. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I sent it off to one of my biker mates. Yeah, hey, get an earful of this. A bit of good tucker here. Yeah, not ap- it's Christmas is not of Jesus. It's not ordered by Jesus, orchestrated. It's not um, for Jesus. Mary never said, "Now listen, we've got to do something here. We're going to have we're going to have a yearly tradition." Okay. And it's going to be for my boy. No, none of that. It's not in the Bible. It's not apostolic teaching or tradition. Breaking bread. We're going to do that over there. See the body and the blood. We're going to break bread here today. That's apostolic tradition. Do this as often as you meet, assemble together. And it is the first day of the week, isn't it? It's Sunday. First day of the week. And, and the scriptures say they assembled together on the first day of the week. Yeah? Yeah, of course they did. It's not apostolic. Um, it's not a tradition of the disciples. The Christ or his church. His people. So that alone tells you something about the churches. Who do that? 
It tells you something, doesn't it? It tells you what it says in the book of Revelation. They're adding to the word. And they take away from the word. Oh, what, what would they take away from the word? That you can lose, forfeit your salvation and end up in hell. You've been born again, you've got a big shiny Bible and you've been under the water and then you're living like a dog and uh, you're on your way to hell. Oh no, no. Oh no. Once saved, always saved. Sorry. The scriptures don't say that. The scriptures do not say that. Anyway, I could quote, and I won't, but I could. Everyone here knows my defence. Scriptures. At least ten that say you can forfeit. You won't lose. You can't lose your salvation. To lose something is unconscious. Amen? To forfeit something is willing. Yeah? So, as long as we know that. But all this Christmas stuff reminds me of the teachings of uh, wayward theologians, uh, church leaders who say, Oh, Jesus came and changed the world. No, he never. Jesus never changed the world. He changed and transformed a remnant out of the world. He never changed the world. You think, you think you're going to change the world? You ain't going to change the world. You ain't going to change Jack. <laughs> you ain't going to change no one. Only Jesus can transform or change at our will. You know what I mean? I'm not that stupid to think that I'm going to go out there and change people. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to preach the word in one format or another and teach it and put it on literature and give it to people and then it's up to them to read it and the word will examine them. Hebrews 4, 12. Because the word of God is alive and living, sharper than any two-edged sword, severing the bone from the marrow gel and the soul from the spirit and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of that one's heart. I wasn't told to go out there and save the world. The Great Commission says, go into the world and preach the gospel. After that, it's on their head. I've told them the truth. My hands are clean. Sorry. Got the blood of no man or woman on my hands. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of Hebrews. If you've got a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, you can look on next door. Go into the Word. Eh? Now that we've sorted the starters or hors d'oeuvres or whatever you want to call it, on train. Hebrews. Glory to the Lamb. We're going to read out of Hebrews. Because that's where we started last week. Hebrews 3. Verses 1 to 6. Therefore holy brethren. Not Christians. Not Christians. Therefore holy brethren. Partakers of the heavenly calling. <coughs> Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession. Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honour than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful, in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope 
Firm. See, there it is there. If we hold the faith, the confidence, the faith, we stay confident in him and faithful to him to the end. We don't change horses midstream. Oh, I don't want to walk with Jesus no more. It's like this. You know, or I've been offended. Oh, sorry, darling. You've been offended. I mean, like, are you greater than Jesus? Look, offence is going to come. I usually get it daily. <laughs> and I feel like going to offence and getting the paling off. You know what I mean? But offence comes. That mean, I'm not going to let that hinder me and throw the towel in. Because some clown has bad manners. Right? Whose house we are, or church we are, if we hold fast. I mean, that's a decent grip. That's a really, you know, hanging in there grip. Yeah? And we looked at that last week. This is our part two of our prophecy for 2025. Staying alive in 2025. Not the teeth, brothers. Staying alive, staying alive, oh, 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 staying alive. No, staying alive in Christ in 2020. Because our relationship can die off. We can, we can become lukewarm. Imagine that last week. Hey? In, in uh, I think it was Matthew 24, 14. Or 11 to 14. The love in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. See? Towards Jesus. You know? And all sorts of reasons for that. Oh, yeah, there's a, how is it that the church says this and this church says that? How is it like this and how is it like that? And why isn't Jesus doing this? And why isn't Jesus doing that? No, 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 none of that registers with me. You know, I, I could say many things. Why did Jesus allow me to be set on fire? Why did Jesus allow me to be food poisoned? Why did Jesus allow me to be stoned? Why did Jesus allow me to be spat on? Why did Jesus allow me to be mocked and cursed by uh, four young people and walking around me and mocking me and poking and jabbing and laughing at me in pu public. Why do you allow that? I can say many things. Why did Jesus allow this? Yeah, I've been 37 and a half years and just look at me. Oh man, where's my building? Where's all my uh, wonderful uh, superficial followers? You know, where are they all? I can say that. But I don't because the Lord shows me bigger and better. Uh, the Lord shows me the scriptures. <laughs> uh, uh, before he comes, be like the days of Noah. Uh, they'll be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. It'll all be about them. You know? They're so brazen. People today are so brazen. They've even got things named after, like call me. They call all sorts of things me, you know. They're bold about it. Same with the, the homosexuals and the, they talk about gay pride. Ooh, how could you be proud of that, behaving like that? Mm. That's very shameful, isn't it? The Lord hands them over to it. Romans chapter 1. 18 to, I think it's 32, isn't it, or 23, one of them. The Lord hands them over to the abased mind. And then they think it's okay. Uh, they, you know. You know the, the church, church goers and that, they're not as proud as Jesus, of Jesus as, as homosexuals are of their uh, behaviour. What's that say? 
It says that Jesus is right. Before he returns, it'd be like the days of Noah. Eight. Eight people. No, there's, oh, you know, revival! Revival! There's going to be a big revival! Ain't going to be no revival, only of evil. <laughs> Does eight people sound like revival? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Son of Man. Revival! Revival! Pentecostal money loving liars. Shame on them. Shame on them. That's why they don't like me. Because I expose them. They don't like the truth. They like religion. They like making money and building big buildings, glorifying themselves. You can grab the most successful church leader in the world today with the biggest church in numbers and building size. I'll guarantee you he's a liar. But you don't even know the man. How could you say that? I know the scriptures. And it says few find the narrow gate. And many take the wide road to destruction because it's easy going for the now. And everyone said, Amen. I didn't hear. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, uh, hey? growing cold. I like growing hot. Hey? It doesn't matter if it's summer or not. Growing cold. Love of many grow cold. John. Can we go to John, please? John. Uh, chapter 6. You know what I'm going to read. John chapter 6. Sixty six. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It, as I said earlier today, there is nowhere else you can go. But to the Lord. Hey, but many were falling away. Let's go to uh, same chapter, verse 60. Therefore, many of, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? And then when you go down to 66, they turned away, didn't they? Who were they? They were his disciples. Many of his disciples. They were disciples. I know the Baptist churches that would those oh no, they weren't really his disciples. You know, they weren't like disciples' disciples. You know, they weren't really a thing. They were his disciples. And many went back to what? Their own ways. Their own, their own uh, thinking. These are the last days. 2025, hey, is around the corner. We've got to stay alive in Christ in 2025. Staying alive in 2025. The securities of the world are nothing. They can crumble overnight. You can go and buy a house tomorrow. Cash. And then the next day or the next week you find out it's got termites. And that's why you got it so cheap. And you're celebrating and partying. Oh man, this was a steal. What, the termites? 
or you buy the house and what's going to happen? And then they, you get something in the mail. Mr. Jones. Or maybe it would be better to say, Dear John, we don't know if you have been notified, but the house you're in, there is a road coming through there and you're going to have to sell your house and we're going to give you chips for it. You know, that's just a hypothetical. It might be a, a Winton, Winton, Win, Western Wind, 110k. Oh, whoops, there goes the roof. Oh, there's one wall gone in the lounge, <laughs> you know. I mean, these are all hypothetical. Oh, don't be so negative, Pastor. Don't be so negative. There's no negative in the Bible, the ugly thing. And there's no positive. You can show me those words. Once again, I'll give you $100. You can have it in the greenback or 250 And when I hear pastors talk about positive and negative, I know they don't speak as the oracles of God. I don't have to bother about them. They're not spiritual. They're solid. They're not led by the Spirit of God. Negative, positive. Uh, introvert, extrovert, doesn't matter. Hey? You say, oh, you're so critical. I don't know a prophet that wasn't. Hey? I, I love Micaiah, the prophet. He always said what the Lord told him to say, and everyone hated him for it. Oh, he never speaks positive. He's always saying what God wants him to say. And what did Micaiah say? How can I prophesy? How can I say anything unless the Lord tells me? What do you want me to bring it out of my own heart? As Jeremiah then said, you know, the prophets speak from their own heart. The priests rule uh, uh, their own way. But what are they going to do in the end? That's what it's all about, isn't it? What are you going to do in the end? Hey? You get to stand at that judgment seat on your Pat Malone. You won't have the boys with you. You won't have the cultures with you, traditions. You won't have anyone with you. Wifey, children, you'll stand there on your own. And you'll give account to God. Not to a mere man. You won't give account to baby Jesus. Or Mary, you're going to give account to Jesus. And he's got eyes of fire and face like lightning. And he wears a robe that's dipped in blood. And he rides a white immortal horse with a double-edged sword protruding from his mouth. Hey? That's the one I worship. That's the one I follow. I don't have to fear no man. Because he said not to. He said, what can man do to you, Paul? What are they going to do? Come on. The biggest and the best. What are they going to do to you? Can they take your body? Yeah. But can they take the, your soul? No. Only one can take your soul and body and put it in hell. His name is Jesus. Not Buddha. Not Allah. Not Muhammad. Not the Pope. No. No, not a Bible dean. Jesus. Jesus. My God, my hero, my saviour. But he's not father, remember that. We're not oneness here. Oneness teaches. what They teach oneness. They say Jesus is Jesus. They say Jesus is father. And they say Jesus is the Holy Ghost. No, Jesus is Jesus. Father is father. And the Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. Uh, three uh, identities, not modes. It's not modalism. Oneness is modalism. And God decides, oh, I'll be Jesus today. And then the next day he's going to be Holy Ghost. The next day he's going to be Father. No, that's modalism. That's modes, M-O-D-E-S. No, three identities, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm going home to Father. And I will send another. He is the paraclete, the Holy Ghost. Three, three. So, 
I'm, I, I don't have no apologies. I have no, no apologies to the oneness people. Who's that footballer, brother? What's his name with the oneness? Falau. Yeah, Israel Falau. Oneness. Mr. Sportsman. <clears throat> Preaching and teaching a lie. Modalism. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus is Father. No, he's not. Jesus is Holy Ghost. No, he's not. Sorry, Israel. You've been deceived again. And he's Daddy Ernie. Any or any. He teaches that modalism. It's deception after deception, isn't it? So they came out of Mormonism, then they ended up at Hellsong. I mean, Hillsong. You wonder why people don't want to go to church. Right? You wonder why people don't want to go to church? They go through every dry gully in town. And then when they do hear the truth, they go, ah, oh, well, blow me down. And they ended up at hell, went from Mormonism to, to hell song, hill song, and then they just broke out of there and they took bits and pieces off this American guy with his oneness. And now they've got their own, it's supposed to be the church of... Uh, Jesus Christ True Church or something in Sydney. And what they teach is just bollocks. Doesn't add up with scripture. Doesn't line up. No. It's hard, isn't it? That sounds hard. What, only one way? Yes. There's only one way. Only one doctrine. Only one saviour. There's only one faith. There's only one. So all these others, Jesus has basically said, you're all liars. Because he said, I am the one. Do, do you hear the churches calling these liars? They're too afraid to. They're too afraid. Bums on seats is money in bag. Bums on seats money in bag you got to tickle their ears with a feather particularly nasty weather you, you got to tell them what they want to hear there's two entries one says at the door what you want to hear and the other one says what you need to hear hey yeah Paul the Apostle I can't Forget about Paul the Apostle. He said, we, we, we're hungry unto this moment. Wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The lion's share. And he said, me and my men are hungry. we got nowhere to sleep. We're homeless. We wear the clothes of the poor. Tell that one to Benny Hinn. Tell that one to Joel Osteen. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, you know, Jesus became poor that we could become rich. Yeah, spiritually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've got you to call it into existence. Name it and claim it. Blab it and grab it. Is that it? Call it into existence. Could you imagine if people could do that? Be a nut house. Be a total nut house if humans had the power and God gave them the power to say something and it happened. Be a fruitcake. Everyone would be running around like, oh. Be like a menagerie, wouldn't it? I could. Uh, oh, Jesus is going to heal everyone. And the people listen to that and when they're not healed, then their love grows cold. No, Jesus never said he's going to heal everyone. He never said that. He never said he's going to save all the, the hungry and the poor and, and give them all food and housing. He never said that. As it was in, in the times of Elisha and Elijah in the land of Zarephath, there were many widows and many lepers, 
But the prophet was sent to one leper and the other prophet was sent to one widow. Not a more. And they don't teach that, do they? Oh, everyone's, everyone's going to be healed. And go down the Gold Coast if you want that. You get the Jesus miracle tent and the gold dust falling out of the, out of the tent. I think they must stick it to the, the tops of the tent and they give it a shake outside and the gold dust falls down. Makes you want to vomit, doesn't it? It makes me want to vomit. Hey? Lie after lie after lie after lie. And then they talk about uh, getting a wife, you know. You know that one, don't you? There's a perfect woman for you, you know, and she's perfect. No, Paul the Apostle didn't say that. Paul the Apostle said, if you can't contain your members, your members, take, take for yourself one woman, one wife, and be content with her fruit. That's breasts and all the rest. Can someone say amen? amen? Oh, where's this perfect woman waiting for you? Oh, we're going to find it. We're going to give you the book. How to find the perfect wife. Oh, look, you're dreaming. <laughs> you're deceived. <laughs> How to find the perfect man. You're deceived. Hey? I met my wife. I knew her a wink. And I said, do you come with me or not? She'd been with me 28 years and I've had two beautiful children. Oh, yeah, but you got this and you... No, I had nothing. I married her and I used a tap washer for a ring. Did we have a house? No. Nowhere to live. I came back to Australia with nothing in my pocket and nowhere to live and no car because I gave my car away. I sold it and bought them a car in the mission. Hello? I knew her a week. And I said, look, I'll be straight up front with you. I've got no friends, I've got no money and I've got nothing. Do you want to marry me? I said, make up your mind. I said, because I'll just let you know what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to go back to a big business. I'm going to go back and preach like I'm doing here. I'm a preacher. That's my vocation. I don't get vacations, and there'll be none of them either. Now, if you want to turn to Jesus and receive him, as your saviour and we'll get you water baptised and you come with me and the Lord will look after both of us and she said I'll have to think about that and she got wise and she came with me Amen and here we are today huh? all because of the Lord huh? and she was a woman that wanted to know Jesus raised up Roman Catholic feeding statues and all the rest of the demonic garbage. But when I met her on that street, I was looking for somewhere to eat and I said, I need something to eat. They're going, not going to kill me. And it has to be dead. It can't be alive. She said, I know where to go. I said, well, let's go. And I'll shout you too. And we had a feed. But before we left, I said, would you like to meet Jesus? And she was just beside herself. She said, yes, I'd love to meet Jesus. I said, well, you take my hand and let's pray. And we prayed and the Lord touched her. And she had a dream of that prior to me meeting her. She had a, a dream, that road, and what happened? That the rain came down and cleansed her. The water of the word. She seen a ship coming from another country. That was me, but I wasn't on the ship, I was on a plane. But I, had, I was on the gospel ship. And everyone said amen? amen. Hallelujah. But I didn't say, oh, what am I going to do? You know, I have no house to live in. I, got no, I didn't even have a, a, a room. But that's the way it was. I just told her straight, I need a woman. I said, I'm a minister and I, I can't go... Mm. 
sleeping around the place. I need a woman to stand with me. You want to come with me or not? It's your choice. And yeah, well, here we are, 28 years. Take one more and be content with her fruit. Take it for yourself. That's how simple the, the word of God is. But they've complicated things so much. It's just people's heads are screwed, you know. They don't know what to think anymore. With all these religious garbage they go on with. And then they go on with, oh, I'm going to get married in a church. And, no, it's got to be a big church. Albert Street, Uniting Church. You know, you've got to have $10,000 for the gown. And, oh, well, I've got nieces like that. $5,000 gown, $20,000 ring. Oh, it has to be like this. It has to be like that. And the house, they have a house and, and, and paying through the gills, trying to keep that going. And, but their heart's like a coal mine. There's no time for Jesus. It's all about them, as Jesus said, in the last days before he comes, eating, drinking, marriage, eating, how many food shows you got? Go to SBS. I watch it. Day and night. Day and night. Food, 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 stuff it in, stuff it in. Then wine. Eating, drinking, wine. Well, vineyards, vineyards. Oh, this and try that. And marriage, you know. Marriage at first lust. You know what I mean? All those shows. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Jesus already said that's what's going to be before he comes. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I didn't come here today to hear that. I want to hear a sunny Sunday sermon. You won't get it here. No sunny Sunday sermons here. Because I care about your soul. Hey? And I'm accountable. If I don't tell the truth, Jesus is going to judge me. And if I don't uh, get it right, he'll slay me. That's it. You don't get any plainer than that. So I'll be, I'll, I'll make sure I'm very careful in what I say, it, it, that I can find a scripture to back it up. And there's no scripture to back up Easter bunnies and big Santa Claus and jumpsuits, red jumpsuits. Right? There's no scripture to back it up. There's no scripture to back up Jesus saying, keep the Sabbath. There's no scripture where Paul the Apostle and them said, keep the Sabbath. Paul the Apostle and Peter said, basically, Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our rest. And we enter that rest by faith. Keep the Sabbath. Give me a break. Oh, everyone's going to be saved in the end. No, they're not. The only revival that will ever be from here on in is the Great Tribulation period. Multitudes came out of the Great Tribulation Multitude. Right? But they had to pay with it, pay for it with their lives. Horrific torture and death. I'd rather just run with Jesus now. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Amen? Amen. We we only just touched on part two. We might have to have a part two B. Oh we... No, we only just touched on part two as we looked into that many turned away we like to look at that because it shows you that people do and can turn away and walk with Jesus no more right but they'll they'll fight you tooth and nail in these churches and say oh no you can't you can't lose your salvation and I say I agree perfectly but you can forfeit it and when you look at those words, lose and forfeit, totally two different cakes altogether. Forfeit is a willing. Losing is accidental and unconscious. You know, you lost your wallet. Oh, screw Where did I put it? You know? Oh, I'm having a seniors moment. Where did I put my wallet? Oh, Hannah knows that. Hannah said... Oh, you're right, Dad? Oh, no. oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you'll be right, Dad. We'll find it. Lost. You know what I mean? But decision-wise, when we opportunity to make a decision, 
and we say, I'm, I'm going to choose this. I'm going to forfeit. I'm going to forfeit my eternal salvation for this present fruit tingle, for this present buzz of the world and, and neglect and deny my relationship or my existence in Christ. Just like Esau. Right? And then he started crying. And the Lord said, no. You're not cutting the mustard there, Esau. You can't have your birthright back. Sorry. You lost it. You chose the bowl of soup. The mess of pottage. You can't come back now. Because you made a definite decision. Everyone in the house said. Mm-hmm. So, hey, we've got to stay alive in 2025. There's no room to wriggle, is there? There's no wiggle room. We've got to stay on the, on the ball. Glory to the Lamb. I give you all the glory, Jesus, everybody said.